Faster, faster, faster. Ooh, that one's good. I know, isn't that pretty good? Nice. Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Mitchell and today we're talking all about shutter drag photography. Shutter drag photography is like one of those like old man photography concepts that you hear about in your photography 101 class and it just looks like kind of this boring subject, but I've kind of been getting into it a little bit lately um, and kind of trying to take a little bit of a modern twist to it. And it's actually going pretty well. I'm getting some photos that I'm really enjoying. If you don't know what shutter drag photography is, it's essentially long exposure photography, except you're moving the camera. So normally with long exposure photography, you're having the camera locked down on a tripod and you don't touch it. Um, with this, it's actually handheld and oftentimes you're like moving it with a subject. Shutter drag photography is a really good way to add motion to your photos. So the way you do it is essentially you take your camera and you change the shutter speed to something really slow, like 1 20th or 1 15th of a second. And then you take photos of something that is moving, most likely in front of you from side to side, and you just follow it as you are taking photos of it. And then oftentimes your goal is to get the subject in focus, but the background is nice and blurry and has the, that motion blur. So it's really cool, especially at nighttime with lights, when you get light streaking, but it can also be done in the daytime with uh, just trees and whatever in the background streaking by. Now, this is one of those things that's definitely a lot easier said than done. I am also by no means an expert. So we kind of wanted to just document our process of just trying it for one of the first times and just kind of give a beginner's perspective on tips and tricks for you if you want to try and just some things to avoid to hopefully get some better photos faster. Like I mentioned before, I've done this once or twice before, but I've actually never gone out with the sole purpose of actually doing shutter drag photography. Oftentimes it's just a byproduct of something that I'm already doing. So a couple nights ago, Steven and I went out with the sole purpose of doing shutter drag photography. So we got ourselves a bike, we got ourselves a camera and we hit the streets. Okay, we have arrived downtown. This is going to be kind of our first location where we can do our shutter drag photography. Steven's just getting the camera set up over there. So I'm excited to see how these turn out. First off, you have to put a bit of thought into what you are shooting, what your subject is, because it kind of has to be something that moves. So cars are a very, very popular thing with this type of photography. For this video and for our photos, we used a bike, which also works, but you can pretty much use any type of transportation really. As long as it moves, you can probably get a shutter drag photo of it. Mitch is gonna ride his bike down the street and then these lights are all gonna be streaked as I try to follow him with the camera and as he rides basically across the street here. I've lowered the shutter speed from 1 30th to 1 15th of a second. Okay, go for it. That is, that is hard. Really? I mean, it'll be cool. Oh wow, those are cool. But that will be hard. <laughs> Shutter drag photography sounds easy to do, but it's really, really hard to perfect. A couple nights ago when we went out, we took 475 photos and that was just over two locations. You can see it takes a lot of tries, especially when you only end up with like two or three final photos. Go whenever you're ready. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Faster, faster, faster. Pedal, 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 pedal. Something we would recommend is to use manual focus on your camera. So if this is a staged photo, something that you can recreate multiple times, what we would recommend is you take your subject, you place them where they're going to be, and then you set focus to them, put it in manual, and then have them ride or go through the same location that you set focus to. Even with a camera that has really fast autofocus, like for this, we were using the Sony a7S Mark III, which has extremely fast autofocus, your opportunity to take the photo is so quick that that just little delay can still become a bit of an issue. Now, when it comes to lenses, we found that tighter focal lengths, like 70 to 100 millimeters are actually better, but they make it a whole lot harder to frame and get the shot. So I've changed to the zoom lens now. It'll be harder because it's a tighter focal length, but the motion blur will just be that much greater. Oh, 
when I get this, it'll be cool, but it's gonna be hard. Really? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> we did try at 200 millimeters for like one attempt, but we found that that was way too much and things were just moving way too fast to get a photo that actually looked any good. So we're having another issue, which is that Mitchell, the subject is too dark. And so we are trying to find a way to put light onto him. So we actually have a light on the front of the bike which isn't really doing much. And so we're gonna put it on the road, pointing at him, so it'll shine on him, and hopefully we can see him. So, uh, we're gonna put this here. And that, I think is actually just in the perfect spot. So we're gonna leave it just like that. In our two hours of shooting, we ended up shooting around 500 photos, but we ended up with probably like two or three that we were actually happy with. Oh man, I think we may have gotten it, Mitchell. Ooh, that one's good. I know, isn't that pretty decent? Nice. <laughs> I think, in my opinion, that these came out pretty good, especially for it being one of our first times doing shutter drag photography. Now, this technique definitely, definitely, definitely does not need to be done at night. I've seen plenty of shutter drag photography photos done in the daytime, which looked really cool. Um, except we, just for this video, we want to go out at night just because we thought it would look cool with the, the city lights. If you live in a city that has a lot of city lights at night, like someplace like Tokyo or even New York or a big city like that, I feel like those lights and having a situation and a scene like that could provide some really, really cool end products. Anyways, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys maybe learned something. If you guys go out and try shutter drag photography, make sure you tag us on Instagram up at TMS Productions underscore. We'd love to see it. Oh, also, um, this video is brought to you with the help of our LUTs and presets. The TMS LUTs and presets are linked down below in the top line of the description. So you can get the LUTs that we use for pretty much every video, as well as some presets, including our like name tag and also the Instagram one that you just saw there. So. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and we'll see you guys in the next video. I, I, th I think we've, we've exhausted, yeah. beat the dead horse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really like use tighter focal lengths and just really grinding it in there.